Okay, so for our first story, the year is 1997. The place, Sierra Leone. Will Scully's on the roof of the Mammy Yoko Hotel. And he's in a water tower that's been partially blown out. Like, it's missing a side. He's sitting up there with the rifle, not his, that he had to steal from a Nigerian soldier. <laughs> shooting down, shooting down at rebellious troops. He's up on this hotel. Watching these troops get closer and closer to where he's at. To where 1,000 people are hiding in this hotel from the chaos outside. Drops the clip. Puts another one in. And that's when he sees a rocket. Coming right at him. Will Scully was an SAS operative who ended up leaving the SAS to do private security consulting. He went to the Sierra Leone, and his job was twofold. was to train troops loyal to the president and to protect a bunch of nerdy geologists because they were looking for ore deposits. So I know what I would rather do. I'd rather hang out with the other army people than hang out with a bunch of bookworms. But anyways, he was doing both of them. And while he was there... There was a junta. There was basically the military that wasn't loyal to the president said, ah, we knew better than this guy. And then they began attacking various places around the country. His first job was to get the geologist out. He's like, sorry, militia, I trained you as much as I can, but I gotta get these nerds out. They're still playing with their rocks and stuff, and they just don't understand what's going on. He finally gets them to put down their rocks. Geologists are like, maybe we can build some sort of catapult and throw bigger rocks. No, 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 just go, just go. You're way out of class for this stuff. His first job is to get the geologist out of there, because that was what he was hired for. But then he is told to go to the Mamayoka Hotel. That's where all the Westerners are at. And Will Scully goes into the hotel, and he says, the first thing that I realized was that everyone was completely freaking out. To be fair, outside the hotel was utter chaos. People were looting and raping and murdering and stuff like that, and the army hadn't even gotten there yet. The conflict hadn't reached that town. Is Freetown. They hadn't reached it yet. But the utter lawlessness of not knowing what was coming next made everybody panic outside the hotel. Inside the hotel, people were panicked. They weren't chopping each other up. But Will Scully was like, this is not good. This isn't a good situation. He takes it upon himself to begin to go out into the chaos to get food for a thousand people, brings it back. It's all, The story sounds unrealistic, but... Trust me, it's all been verified. He ends up leaving the hotel a couple times getting food. He commandeers the kitchen. He's like, you don't know how to make filet mignon. I'll do it. That didn't happen. But he commandeered the kitchen and he told all the cooks, you got to make enough stuff for a thousand people. Like, I'll keep going out and getting food, but we got to keep these people fed. They're freaking out. It's a hotel. So there's families there and stuff like that. But at one point, what happens is a bunch of Nigerian soldiers that are loyal to the president break into the hotel. And they're, they're like, the army is on their way here right now. And they're going to slaughter everyone in this hotel. And Will's basically like, you didn't have to say that in front of the thousand people that are eating their fruit cups right now. We need to learn a little bit about tact. But he goes, okay, you know, we have to deal with it. So let's go, let's set up a perimeter. You go this way, soldier. You go that way, soldier. And they're like, no, we're not fighting. We're just going to hide and hope that we survive the massacre. We got these other uniforms we're just going to put on. Now... Will Scully is like, we got, we got to, we have to defend this place. He goes up to the roof of the Mamioka Hotel. There's a bunch of Nigerian soldiers up there just kind of hanging out, not really preparing for what's coming. So he's like, okay, those soldiers down there are a bunch of cowards, but you, you, and you, you take up that position, you take up that position. And they're like, no, we're not going to do that. We also got these other uniforms they're going to put on. So he is up there. And what he has is the Nigerians don't want to help him fight. But he has all their rifles. On the top of this hotel was, for whatever reason, I guess this is standard practice in Sierra Leone, but on the top of the hotel there was also a rocket launcher and a machine gun. So in the world of Fortnite, he landed in a really good place. He has all these great weapons. He's like, hey, why is this machine gun glowing gold? He also has an ally on the rooftop, kind of. There is another Westerner on the rooftop. There's another British guy. His name is Major Lincoln Jop. Will Scully's like, oh, thank God you're here. And he's like, hey, Major, so... We're going to fight these guys off. Now, this is super bizarre. Major Lincoln Jop said, oh, no, 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 I can't fight. If I shoot anybody, officially, the British government is involved in this war. So I can't, I can't help you, dude. 
Sips a little bit of tea. He's like, oh, great. So he's just by himself. A literal one-man army. And that's when he sees the jeeps coming in. From distance, all surrounding the hotel. Bunch of jeeps coming in. Not just any jeeps. Army jeeps. And not just any army jeeps, but rebellious army jeeps. And he's like, this is a, this this really can't get any worse. He then begins a one-man war against this army. First off, heavy machine gun. Just laying into these dudes. Taking them out. He sees them starting to assemble a heavy machine gun in the street. They are ready to take this hotel. And once he... Like, he basically... It's like in the movies. He's running from one edge to the other. Shooting. Drops the gun, goes, gets another gun, shooting, and he's trying to create this illusion of multiple assailants on top of this building. Gun runs out of ammo, because it's real life, it's not a video game. He then goes to the stairwell where a bunch of Nigerian soldiers are hiding. He's like, hey, I I need more bullets to put in these guns, and they won't help him. They're so scared. And of course, he's thinking, if I lose, we all lose. But they're already putting on their new uniforms. So, takes up the rocket launcher, This battle rages for hours. And that's where we find Will Scully in the water tower that's halfway blown out. And he's shooting at these dudes. And now, there's a lot of things you don't want to see coming at you. A rhinoceros? An elephant? Well, I guess pretty much any big animal you don't want to see coming at you unless you're a matador. But one of the least things you ever want to see coming at you is a missile. And he sees it coming at him, and he's thinking, okay, this this is it. I'm going to keep shooting, but I'm dead. The missile flies between his legs and blows out the back of the water tower. <laughs> he's deafened. He's covered in blood. And he thinks it's his at first. No, it's the major who was just hanging out also in the water tower because he couldn't do anything else. Got blown to bits by the rocket. And he's like, I, whoa, I survived. I guess I get to keep playing. <laughs> Keep shooting. The battle goes on for three hours. The rebel troops can get nowhere near the hotel. Nowhere near the hotel. And at one point, he sees a van now driving towards him. He's thinking, this is it, mini boss. After this, I get to fight the fight the floating head of the rebel general, but this is the mini boss that's gonna turn into a mech. And there he notices that they're not shooting at him. So he is thinking like this is something coming at him. A car bomb or whatever. He lines up his shot, he gets ready. And in the quiet of it, he's thinking, yeah, just just give it a second. Give it a second. And off in the distance, he sees it start to turn a corner, and he notices a big red cross on the side of it. And he's like, I almost blew that dude's brains out. Like, there was, he probably shouldn't have come straight at the hotel. The red cross had negotiated a ceasefire to get the Westerners out of the building. And they did all end up getting evacuated. Now, what's sad about that is, like, the red cross <laughs> probably should have just negotiated an evacuation for the whole city. But they're like, eh, everyone else. Yeah, at one point when Will Scully was up there on the roof, he saw a guy get chopped up with a machete. And that vision was constantly running through his head. Like, if we lose, I'm going to get chopped up with a machete. So he had no he had no ground to cede. He had to fight. And fight, he did. Took a rocket between the legs. Got a bunch of major blood on him. He ended up getting awarded by the Queen for valiantry and bravery and all that stuff, which, I mean, that's exactly what it was. Imagine We tend to imagine ourselves in a diehard type situation, but I have no real experience with firearms. I mean, it'd be nice for me to crawl through air vents. Well, air vents aren't big enough to hold me or most people, but it'd be nice to crawl through air vents and jump down and snap people's necks. There are. It's funny because we can daydream this stuff and be like, oh yeah, I'm the last one left and I'm like fighting the zombie apocalypse. I'm the last one left and I'm fighting all these soldiers. You imagine this stuff, but then some people are actually willing or able to do it. And he was willing and able. There was a story the other day in Colorado. A dude killed a mountain lion with his bare hands. And I can almost guarantee you that that dude was a guy like Will Scully. If a mountain lion attacked me, I would like to think I could kill it with my bare hands, but I couldn't. But men like Will Scully and men like this unknown dude who straight up strangled a mountain lion or beat it to death or whatever, we don't know how he killed it. 
These people do exist. It's quite fascinating. It's quite fascinating. I mean, to fight a three-hour battle against hundreds of troops that are have you outgunned, that is almost the definition of a superhero. Your superpower just happens to be not peeing your pants and being able to shoot hundreds of people multiple times and then get drenched in someone else's blood and being like, where's my award, your highness? So hats off to you, Will Scully. Hats off to you. What Do they say that in Britain? Tease off to you, Willie. Probably shouldn't call him Willie. He'll murder me. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. 